Well, good afternoon. I'm glad to be here. I enjoy to share some ideas with you as the mission of TEDx is to share ideas that might impact the world or change the world or actually give you some information uh, about different people what other people can do. And uh, my talk actually is not going to involve chemistry as I give lecture every day in chemistry. I'm going to do something different so I will not bore you with chemistry I do with my students. Uh, so my topic today is, will be about inspiration and innovation. And what, what I mean by that, uh, you look around you every day, you see different things uh, that can inspire things in you and actually especially for people who are in research or doing kind of um, uh, trying to develop things. They look around them and from what is around them they can develop and get new ideas. Some of these ideas to start with, they might be very imaginary. They'll be imagined so much far and which they are supposed to imagine as much as they can. Since if you have limitation in your imagination, you cannot accomplish much. So you have to accomplish, to think and beyond the limitation of your imagination if you can. So what I will start with, okay. Uh, this is just uh, some of the pictures I have. This is a, I'm talking about the first picture to the left. When we were kids, they used to let us, uh, tell us stories. Tell us tales about uh, the past, or sometimes tell us stories and tales about how much you can imagine, and how can you see things that are not available. And uh, when we were kids, actually, the, during the night time, they give us tales stories, night, uh, night, uh, night stories like Aladdin. And then I'd give you the stories, that let have the magic carpet. We wish we have magic carpet. So we can fly everywhere, jump in the carpet, take jasmine, fly over the desert, fly over the desert, go in the mountains, over the seas, across, across, uh, go across areas just you think of. They might not be there, just in your imagination. Refresh your imagination and get uh, to do anything you want. And that's what we start with. As, a kid, as kids, we used to have that, sleep in the night, we imagine before we sleep, then in the morning, that's not there. But at least we think about it. And as a kid, a kid we thought about uh, Aladdin and what he can do, what can fly, and we can consider what they have those days and what we have today. So I have in the right the space shuttle, and all of us know the space shuttle. If we, talk, if we told the people that during Aladdin time that there should be something, something you can fly, you tell, they'll tell you you are crazy. <laughs> this is going to happen, actually. Well, nowadays, actually, we have this, they have airplanes you can fly, which is the same thing as well, his imaginary carpet. And we can have a space shuttle that can go to space. We have aircrafts, spacecraft that go to Mars, to, to the moon, to Mars, to Saturn, or other places in the future. We would think of, you can think of it now. You might think it's just imagination in uh, a century or more. That might be the reality of life. And it happened I have experience in both. As a kid, I used to listen to those tales and stories and read books about Aladdin. And the past few summer, actually, I worked at NASA or with uh, Dr. Paul Mahaffey, where they're actually de developing um, SAM, which is SAM analyzer at Mars. And they're sending this machine's reality to Mars to do analysis on Mars. I can, myself, I can see the difference in the imagination I had when I was a kid and the reality now. Actually, I can uh, I dealt with uh, things. Imagine when I was a kid, I deal with people really do missions to Mars and uh, to Saturn, and in the future might be Titan to look at the uh, hydrocarbon lakes where they can get hydrocarbon thing from uh, Titans. And that's where I start, and I thought that imagination would inspire you to do something different. If Aladdin didn't start there, we cannot go any further. Okay, and I, after that, I have other thoughts for myself. And look at the world around you, you can see the disparities. You can see people living in poverty, having not much, people are rich, having so much to, to, to do with. And in my imagination, my thoughts and my wish, can we bring those uh, two type of uh, lives as close as much? We elevate uh, uh, poverty if we can. We have things available to most people as much as we can, at least we give them better life. So to the left you see here, we have a kid from Africa uh, where they have not much actually. Uh, they are, they are uh, poor, they don't have clothing, everything, they have harsh and hard life. To the right, the kid is saying we have a great life, we have everything available, they can do so much. Is there any way we can bring these two lives together? Is there any way we can bring them, regardless of where you live, you have the necessity of life. 
That's my imagination. I hope these can be reached. Even they can be like uh, Aladdin and the space shuttle. Aladdin is a car, but it's a special that difference. But we were able to bring them to, to life, bring them to reality. Can we bring these to reality? Actually, this is what we see the condition for both lives. To the left, you see the condition. We have the desert, no water, no food, uh, scorching, uh, hot sun, and there is not much to do. And even if they have no water to drink, those guys, they might not have water to shower or do anything. Well, to the right, you can see the difference in both environments. To the right, you have the jungle, you have water, you can have uh, the fish, you can go fishing, you go boating, well, you cannot go boating in the desert. There's nothing you can do there other than go throwing sand around you. Is there any way we can have the two lives difference? And if you can see, what is the difference between both environments? You look at both environments, I'm going to bring chemistry over here. There's only one element difference between both. The one to the right, it has H2O, which is water. And that is the difference. If you can bring water to the desert, you can make it flourish, and you can have uh, grow food, grow plants, you can have a forest where the desert is. So actually, the main factor between both conditions, and actually the factor that can bring both uh, poverty and richness is water. If you can create water in where you want, bring it to the place you want, then everything will be fine. Can we do that? Is that possible? Let's have an imagination and think which way we can uh, think and do something different. So I try also to connect my childhood with, uh, with the reality and with what we are hoping for. Uh, this, is, uh, this picture came from Palestine. Actually, this is in the 1900s, 1900s, and you can see the cart over there. This is not the recent life. This is not the life right now. But this is how things is. The life uh, conditions is hard and harsh. And uh, you have no water. Uh, and some the people have to live how we used to do it. We lived in a small village. What they do, they have to have a big, a big wall at the side of the village. So in the winter, it rained like a couple of months in the winter. During the summer, starting May till October, no water, no rain. They have to drink, they have to drink water. They have to wash their clothes. They have to do, they have what they need water around. So the women, they have to go carry these jar, these jar of economic jarra to the well. They go line one by one every evening. The women go together, bring water, come home for the next day. And that's the way the life is. So this is actually how you know, I grew up. Actually, my mom used to do it. So I used to go with, try to go with her. Mom, I would like to go with you. So it is too far. It's about half a mile. Go. I insist I have to go. So she buys me one of these little ones, miniature one. I carry it and go with her. So I go work with her, get, she fill it for me. And on our way back, as soon as I come back, I'm too tired. I cannot move. So she had to carry me. She had to carry the jarra and carry me and carry my to go home, which is double, double the job. So it made me feel that at that time, I, said, I want to tell when I was a kid, I want to help now to see if we can bring water, if there's any way we can have water to be available to everyone. This is just the imagination. This is just, it might not be reality. Imagine I can bring water at any time to anyone, anywhere you are. If that's possible, then a lot of problems are solved. And for those people, actually, they, they, they didn't take it as a hardship or a uh, real bad life. That is the way it is. But that is the way it is, so they have to live with it. They have to make out of it, the best out of it. So the women used to go there, one after the other, and they make it as a party time. They go singing. They, one after they'll be singing in the groups. So actually, everybody would be looking for the next day, next evening, so they can walk together, tell their stories, go like a party, go by the well, collect the water, and see each other. And the girls, they have used to uh, take it and they hold the jar on their head, and they'll be proud to walk with nicely, elegantly, so they can show off for the men around. So they use it as also for other uh, cultural issues. So they, uh, they go together. So actually, it was hardship, but at the same time, it was fun. They make it fun. They enjoy it. They make the life out of it. So this is how it goes. So I'm from uh, those times, I would like to even, I'm from my family, there should be a way to bring it together. It, life has changed, and uh, they have um, uh, machines, or they have the under, uh, dig underground water. Things have changed, so the water can get uh, through the pipes to the home everywhere like we see it over here. Even still, we have the problem. If there is a drought, some areas, drought, they have water uh, shortage. Uh, you, like here, in, sometimes in the summer, there are water restrictions. 
if it rains all, all year long, but if there is no water, you cannot water your uh, backyard or your, or your lawn, or you cannot uh, wash your car. That water is necessary. Even we have all these kinds of technologies, still water is needed, and there is shortage all the time. But we, there should be a way to have water regardless, if it is raining or not, if there, if there, there is drought or not, water should be available. And this is just only imagination and hope. And I came up to uh, this um, talk. You have access to water is a pressing global issue. It's for everyone, for the rich and for the poor, for developing countries and developed countries. So uh, that's just an issue going on. And uh, the WHO, World Health Organization, and UNICEF, estimate that about 900 million people, about one-fifth of the world, are out of water, which is a big problem, big issue here. And uh, actually, this is, uh, these people are without safe water for drinking. The same thing I saw. And actually, the water from those wells, they are happy to have it. But, uh, when, but they won't drink it. Actually, since they have been sitting for months in the well, they have a lot of mosquitoes, a lot of larvae. And so they have to, to use, there is no water. They have to use it. They, they filter it with a piece of uh, cloth to take the junk out. But what is inside is worse uh, what they took off. But that's the only choice. And this is the problem actually they have. And actually, they, I have a quote from uh, Chatre, who is an uh, uh, MIT engineer. He's working on these kind of issues. As a middle class person, I think it is terrible that the poor have to spend hours a day walking just to obtain a basic necessities. So there, actually, women have to be the water transportation system. But now, we have the problem here. This is just uh, how the problem is. We look at the map there. You can see the red areas where the, in the middle of the uh, world, we have all those areas, they have shortage of water year long. They have uh, droughts. There is no, uh, the drought can cause a problem for their, uh, for their uh, crops. They cannot drink, and they have, no, don't have what to drink. To the right, actually, the one that is, that's from Australia, because it's a de uh, developed country. Actually, now they have level eight, not level five of water shortage. They have restrictions all the time. Farmers are complaining. They have uh, strikes. Sometimes there is no water. They have to, they have to be growing their uh, uh, plants and vegetables. So they need water. That's the problem. And uh, the lower um, one, that's just um, Dubai, and where we have uh, richness and uh, things are flourishing. They have water. They have desalination plants. That means they should have no, no shortage in water. But it happens if they have a pipe breaks, then they have no water, and they have to go to the mall to uh, go to the bathroom or do, take a shower or do something like that. So this is just a problem. Actually, it doesn't matter. If you are rich or poor, a problem can come up every time. So bringing water to, the, to your house, uh, that's very a necessity, actually. And this is our delivery system now. We have these trucks. Now, you don't worry about it. We have bottled water. But where this is this water? Water we drink from here, from DC. It comes from Pennsylvania. You have to take it two hours, three hours of drive. They take it to bring it over here. We don't have the water in DC. We have the Potomac. It's raining outside now, but we don't have water drinks. So they have to bring it from somewhere else. So we have these delivery trucks. And actually, if there's a shortage in water, these delivery trucks will not find water to bring. If there is no water, there is no spring water, they will, will have a problem. And actually, we are not the only one who has this problem. There are other creatures in this world sharing the problem. And this is the one that uh, shares the problem with us. But uh, we have to ask them, if they have a, do they have a solution to their problem the same we are, which we don't have a solution. Actually, uh, so this is a, a Stenocora beetle bug. It lives in Namibia, Namibian desert, where it's very hot and very dry. The driest, uh, one of the driest uh, parts of the world, actually. And there is a harsh environment. But what does, how does this take care of the problem? You look at this bug. The back of it, these bombs, actually what they do in the, in the evening, they fly. And so these bombs actually they absorb, water from the, absorb water from the air. They keep collecting water drop, little by little, molecule by molecule, until it gets a big drop. Then it rolls in the back of the, uh, the mouth and drain and satisfies itself. The bug has solved the problem. Can we solve that problem the way it does? If we are able to build the material similar to what is in the back of the bug, Anywhere you go, if you are here, you just you have a cup from that material, you don't have to have, buy water, just it will collect water and you drink it. You'll be able to get water from any place. You, go, you don't need piping, pipes to bring the water to your house. You have this on top of your house, and you have water, water coming to your house. There is no piping. If there is a, a hurricane or if there is an electricity problem, they still have water. Well, nowadays, if you have a problem with the, no power, you can't use the bathroom. There is no water to, to use at home. You can't have a shower. But if you have that water, water will be available to you at any time. 
But if we have those materials, and actually they have some accomplishment has come up somewhat to reality, even just imagination to be able to make those materials, and uh, let's see what we can have. And these have built the MIT group, they have built them uh, this mesh that can collect water, but this is still, it is not very well developed, they still have changed things. You can get about from one meter square of this one, you can have a liter of water in, in a day. But if you can develop it to more, still we can, the development of the material is something different. You might be able to have satisfactory amount of water. As this is, you go to uh, the store to bring bottled water. Even instead of that, if you can get the hat, go to the uh, ball game with the cups like that, so the cups can collect the water and you sip the water, you don't have to worry about it. You ride your bike, you are traveling and uh, going somewhere, you have a new helmet. That helmet has that cup, the cup would collect water, so you can sip the water and don't have to even to get off your bike. So that's just a problem. Can you imagine that? And that's what uh, Ernie says, actually, in the Sesame Street. That's one problem. Another problem, actually, um, we show your kids that um, they have, uh, they watch some kind of movies, they see Spider-Man. And a lot of kids, they would like to be like Spider-Man. They can jump in uh, any wall, go just uh, things like that. This is just an imagination. And actually, uh, there is some, and if you look in nature, you'll be inspired by what is in the right. You have this gecko. A gecko can walk up, up the wall, can walk across the ceiling. If a glass wall, anything, it can walk up and have no problem. But we have a problem, we cannot do that. Is there any way we can have feet like the gecko feet? We can go anywhere so we can uh, do other, other things. And see, we need it. Actually, we need it here, just a quarter of a mile away from here. They have been going up the uh, monument trying to see if there are cracks after the quake. If there are cracks, they have certain four engineers actually, they go climbing up there, uh, having the ropes, and go down and the score, uh, is, uh, going up and down to check if there are any cracks and do that. How about can we hire four geckos to go do that? We give them cameras so they can go around and just go around and uh, scrap the thing and then they can see if there are cracks or anything like that. We don't have to have people walking up there. That's one of the things in there. And actually, it is not the gecko. If can we have uh, you dressed in a way, those people can dress nicely easily and can walk up there. And actually, what, what is the problem? If the gecko have to walk, uh, it has to walk uh, nicely. And some people think the gecko has some sticky thing that goes to the wall, but in reality it does not. If it is sticky, it will not be able to walk. Like if you walk in the mud, it's not easy to walk. The same, there is something different than um, having a sticky feet. And this is the foot of the uh, gecko. As you it has very fine hair. They have very fine hair, it's like nano size. They go up the wall and they have attractive forces between the wall, we call them Van der Waal forces or London forces. Actually, just for those nanomaterials, they stick to any surface. So they can hold the gecko on top. So the gecko would be something like that. So the MIT group, uh, the uh, MIT Biomimetic Lab, they have developed robots like that. They have a square st sticker bot. And uh, that is good actually for the robots. They can be used in military surveillance and search, rescue, or go, nowadays they can go up the monument to check that stuff. And then there are another group at uh, Berkeley, uh, by Robert uh, Fall, actually he's developing the same thing. It happened that uh, three years ago I have to sit in his, uh, watch him giving a lecture too. So I have the experience both <laughs> reality and I have the imagination with that. I guess uh, I'll stop here and thank you so much for listening.